legendaries are often some of the most powerful and rarest Pokemon. Because of this, they don't seem to see the limelight that much as they get banned from runs. I decided it was time to change this, therefore I'm going to give them some of the spotlight. Rules are on screen now, if you need to flick back to them at all, they're in the description below and let's get into the run. I'm sure you guys are thinking, how can you get a legendary so early? Well, in the very first route, they actually run into the first legendary possible in this game. We quickly use him to decimate some school kids so we can steal their TMs. And then we can move on to the first gym leader in Raw. But the pure power that this Pokemon has is well too much, so it just obliterates him. And I decide from this point, he's a bit too overpowered, so we can't actually use him anymore. Thankfully, at this point, I can have an egg fly down from the sky doesn't crack by the way it just falls down in a little present then we have the nice tedious process of walking up and down because we don't have the bike yet to hatch this boy but it does eventually hatch and there's a manaphy inside he gets the nickname uriel and we can now continue we then get the option between two different pokemon one being a mew and one being a jirachi i decide the mew is actually the best one to go for so bye jirachi we then have the mars battle where i start off with uriel I used a charm, which probably wasn't the wisest idea, but I kind of expected the Zubat to be faster than us, so it'd switch into Perugly, and then I could charm that. Fortunately, that's not what happened, though. He actually used Supersonic against us, and then I hit myself as he switches in his Perugly. I then got his Perugly, which fake outs me, and then the turn after, I hit myself. That means by the time I've used a couple of charms to knock it down in health, I actually have to switch out to Gabriel. Gabriel at this point only knows Pound, therefore I decide to use a workup to get its attack up, and I actually decide to use Reflect type to turn into a normal type, stopping Thief from being super effective. This should end up saving me from a crit to take me out. It doesn't end up being an issue at all though, because after a few more workups, we can take it out with a few pounds. Then she sends out her Zubat, but it's pretty frail and we are a legendary, so we take it out very swimmingly. After this, we can go on to the Gardenia fight. The strategy for this one's rather simple. Truby can only use special moves, so we max our special defense out with Amnesia. I then choose to use Reflect type, so I will actually resist all the grass moves coming up. After this, it's just a matter of maxing out my attack with Workup to ensure that I can one-shot every single one of her Pokemon. Oh, I was wrong. Roserade actually survives. Plus it poisoned me and crit me with a poison sting. Talk about some bad luck. Anyway, poison sting's an incredibly weak move, so obviously we're going to take it out on the next turn. We then discover Team Galactic have a dastardly plan. Stop everyone from getting bikes. What geniuses. Thankfully, we foiled that plan. I then get a lovely blue bike. Seems it'll match my passport. There is a lot of nonsense before the next gym, but we basically fly through it, so I'm just going to start off with the Maylene battle. Now, you'll notice I've gone in here quite underleveled. I'm 27 on one and 23 on the other. That's because it's actually quite a dangerous thing of overleveling. There are a lot of battles, and the level caps are very tight, so we need to make sure that these two Pokemon don't overlevel by keeping them very low. But it doesn't really matter, as Gabriel flew through Maylene without even using anything to raise the power of the Psychic. We then help Dawn out just so I can get the fly TM. Yeah, I had no interest helping her get a Pokedex back, but I want to be able to fly around nice and easy. And with that, we are wake ready. This gym isn't really too tough though. I tail glow twice and then I get my defense dropped and I know I don't want to risk an attack from other Pokemon, so I just go all out attacking. Gyarados is quite heavy, so it does end up getting taken down. Quagsire, four times weak to it, so it's expected what happens there. And Floatzel is obviously faster than us, but it doesn't end up flinching us. Therefore, we can get our grass mat off and take it out. We then scare away some Psyduck by showing them our ugly mug. Before progressing onto a Grunt, calling a town insignificant. Imagine that. He's literally not even got a name. His name is Grunt, and he's calling something else insignificant. His boss ends up calling the struggle we had against him insignificant. Now, I'm just saying it wasn't any struggle. We swept through him, so I don't know what you're on about. Anyway, all that done, we're now Fantina ready. At this point, though, we've got the TMs for Surf, so we have an incredibly powerful special move to give to Uriel. We set up a few tail glows as the Driftlim just loves to sap our strength before taking him down with the Surf. Gengar does get off a confused way, but he can't hold up to the waves that crash down on him. We then have the Miss Magius, but it follows the exact same fate. We do have another Barry fight here, but as always, Barry is just pitifully weak, so we just obliterate him. Like, he's not even posing a single challenge in this run to us whatsoever. Look at him. Look, he's terrible. One thing that isn't incredibly terrible, but it is still terrible, is Byron, though. I start off with my Mew, but I actually made an error. I was supposed to teach him Stealth Rocks before this battle began, but I forgot to. 
Therefore, what I've got to do is set up a few amnesias and try and wait out some trick rooms. I then set up a fair few workups, but the unfortunate thing is, by the time I'm actually ready to attack, I'm too low to stay in. This means I basically just wasted a load of time with Mew. Although it does hit itself once or twice, we do eventually get a couple tail glows set off and then we've got Surf ready. Obviously, the Steelix holds on, but that's to be expected with its sturdy, but it just ends up using Sandstorm. This means we're now free to take it down as he's going to use a heal, we'll take that down and then we get an extra hit because we're faster at this point. Next up is Bastiodon, now it does have Thunderbolt but it can't actually kill me, I'm not in a range to die from it, therefore I just use two surfs and take that out. We then meet up with Professor Rowan who gives us the gruelling task of checking out a lake. Finally, the first rest on this adventure. Of course some drama would happen, we can't just sit back with our feet up can we? We then have the lady at the Pokemon Center say we hope to see you again. She just enjoys the pain of Pokemon apparently. Everybody do the flop! We then discover the source behind the disruption was Saturn, so we have to obliterate him for ruining our chance at a holiday. We then have a load of scallywags and scoundrels to deal with for Rowan and Dawn. We then have to walk through the blistering cold to get to the next lake. But before we can get in the lake, we obviously have to take down the gym leader. The strategy is fairly simple, we've still got work up, so we set a few of them up before using a flamethrower to take down the snowbird. After this, Sneasel comes out, but it's not really that bad as it's going to probably use Avalanche, therefore we can just use one flamethrower and take that down. Now you might have thought, why don't you just copy the type so you're not getting damaged by the hail? This Pokemon right here, Medicham, is the reason. We would be one shot if we did that. Unfortunately though, it does end up going for a bulk up, meaning our Shadow Claw doesn't end up taking it out. I was really expecting it to hit us here. It then gets buffeted into healing range, so we just use a Shadow Claw to get right back to where we were. Then as we get knocked really low with an Ice Punch, we finish it off with one last Shadow Claw. We are only on 8 health, but the Abomina Snow is the only Pokemon left, meaning we're not going to have to worry about Hail as it's 4 times a week to Flamethrower, so there's not a chance it can survive. We then see Jupiter come to the same conclusion we do, that Barry is laughably weak and shouldn't be battling. I then end up walking through a Pokeball. Um, have I become a ghost? Thankfully, I wasn't too much of a ghost to be able to press a button and release the lake trio so they can teleport back to their lakes, I'm guessing. I then have the Jupiter and Mars double battle, but I actually decide that I don't want Barry to help me, so I use Surf and take down literally everything on the playing field. Once that's done, we've got to take down Cyrus. Tail Glow and Ice Beam combo is more than enough to be able to take down the Honchkrow. Gyarados then comes out and it can do some decent damage to us, but we just need two Ice Beams and we've taken it down ourselves. After that, we've got the Weavile. It uses a Dig, but I know it's not going to take us out, therefore I just use a Surf against it. Unfortunately, it's not enough for the KO and he does heal it up, so we use another Surf to get it back to where we were. I then end up using a Charm against it to lower its attack, but I should have just Surfed as he only used a Super Potion this time. With the Charm though, it won't take us out, so I just wait out its Dig and finish it off with one last wave. All that's left now is the Crobat, but obviously Uriel is in no shape to stay in, so we need to switch out. Thankfully though, Crobat is poison type, therefore an incredibly powerful Stab Psychic is going to take it down in only two shots, and it can't really damage us as it's got no decent moves. With all that done now, we can get a third encounter though, being Dialga. Obviously we just use the Master Ball, it's a lot easier to catch it than waste our time using like Dust Balls or anything like that. With him on our team, I decide just to take on Volkner straight away. He leads with his Raichu, and I was actually expecting this thing to Volt Switch, therefore I used a Flash Cannon, but obviously it doesn't do much damage because he ends up nuzzling us to paralyze ourselves instead. Thankfully the next turn he does do what I expected, so I can hit the Ambipom for safe damage. It did knock it into healing range though, and we actually get paralyzed, so we're actually in a worse situation than we should have been. And this becomes a cycle, as the next time it heals up, guess what happens? I get paralyzed again. I then get paralyzed twice in a row as I'm about to take the Ambipomp out, so I take some major damage before I manage to win this. His next Pokemon is Octillery, but I know it can't take us out in one hit, therefore I use a Dragon Claw to get a bit of damage before switching out. I picked Gabriel and we just need one Thunderbolt to finish the Octillery off. We then have the Raichu come back out and I know it's going to Volt Switch, but I actually wanted to Reflect type anyway, so it doesn't matter which Pokemon's here to Reflect the type of because they're both the same typing. This stops the Luxray from being able to take us out using one Crunch and we can do a bit of damage to it with Psychic. We get a special defense drop, but thanks to the Citrus Berry he was holding, he survives on a slither on the next turn, meaning we take another turn of unnecessary damage ready for the Raichu. 
At this point, I know I can't safely switch into anyone, so I have no choice but to give up my Mew. Fortunately for me, though, friendship is a thing in this game and it holds on. But I think after how unlucky I got with the paralysis, this is more than fair. I then know he's using Surf against me, so I can switch in Ural and he dodges the attack anyway. But it wouldn't have done any damage even if it did have hit. After that, though, he is in a range of being taken out by a Surf himself, so we go and take him out. There was a lot of luck in that fight, I'm not going to lie, but there was a lot of bad luck in it too, so I think it all evened out in the end. And with them down, we're now ready to take on the Elite Four. Oh no, we got a Barry fight before it. I start off with Uriel as he starts off with his Star Raptor. I get off one Tail Glow as it uses Sunny Day, and then take it quite low with an Ice Beam, but it had a Focus Sash, so it holds on. Fortunately, its close combat does nothing, and then we can finish it off, and he sends out his Torterra. That thing's four times weak to Ice Beam, so yeah. He then brings out his Rapidash, but obviously we're a water type, we've upped our special attack, so we're going to annihilate it with a Surf. Snorlax then does end up coming out, and I go for an Ice Beam like an idiot instead of a Surf, because I knew I was only going to do a bit of damage, but like I didn't think about the thick fat, so I did literally minimal damage. He then gets off a Yawn, so I just decide to switch into Dialga. Fortunately, Snorlax hasn't got very good defense, so one Dragon Claw is enough to take it out. We then have the Floatzel, which goes for a crunch before being completely taken out. After that, all he's got left is the Heracross, but I know this thing is going to be slower, and I know I can take it out in a couple of hits before it takes me out, so I just go ahead, use two Dragon Claws, and it's gone. Literally such a walk over this entire run. Right, now comes the Elite Four. He uses Dust Duck, so I decide just to reflect type because he's going to use Toxic and that way we can't be poisoned by him. This gives us the opportunity to use Nasty Plots to max out our special attack. And with that, we can take the Dust Ducks down with a Psychic. Now, he does have Drapion later on, which his most powerful move is Earthquake and we're Poison type without Levitate right now. Therefore, I decide the best thing to do is to steal the typing of Beautifly, even if that means taking a hit from it. Thankfully though, we didn't take a hit as it just Quiver Dance twice trying to get its special defense up as much as ours. Thunderbolt super effective, so obviously we take it out with that. And with that done, we really have nothing to worry about except the Drapion, but I bring out Uriel for that battle. We hit it with a Surf and then go to lower its attack with Charm, but on that turn, it actually crits us, so it didn't matter. Realistically, I should have just done two Surfs and taken it out, but thankfully it didn't manage to take us out, so I can just finish it off that way now. With Bertha, I set one Tail Glow and I was expecting it to Toxic, but it ends up using Earthquake to do a bit of damage. I had a Berry on if it did Toxic, so I'd have been safe though. After that, Quagsire is obviously going to go down to a Grass Knot. Sudowoodoo can't handle a Surf. Even with its Berry, Whiskash is not able to take on the Grass Knot that we've got coming for it. Golem does have Sturdy, so it manages to survive a hit, but it doesn't really matter as it can't do an awful lot of damage with its Earthquake. Obviously, we have a bit of a battle against her healing, but eventually it does go down. Then, all that's left is he powered on, but you can guess exactly how that goes. We then have Flint, who starts out with his Rapidash, and it uses a Poison Jab against us and gets the Poison off. Fortunately, one Surf's enough to take it out, but it's really annoying he got that Poison. Like, I had to pick the Leper Berry just in case it used Hypnosis, but obviously the AI just thought, oh, I'm not going to use Hypnosis this time. Steelix comes out, but that thing's also weak to water type, so one surf takes him down too. I can't survive a high jump kick and poison tick, therefore I bring Lucifer in, but it turns out it didn't matter as she missed the high jump kick anyway. I then use a Dragon Claw to knock her into healing range before switching in my Mew. Obviously though, we end up getting burned the very next turn as she hits us with one fire punch and gets the other status effect she could have got against us. Synchronize does pass it over, but it's still annoying. I then decide it's time to set up a few nasty plots and we actually heal the burn off with friendship, thankfully. Once this is done, we can finish it off with a psychic, so he sends out his Drifblin. It uses Minimize, but it meant nothing against my psychic, so I take him down. Now, all we've got left is the Inferno, and although it does have a Focus Sash, it can't really do much damage to us. Therefore, I use two psychics and it's gone. We then have the Lucian battle, but I have a pretty solid plan for it. I Swords Dance three times and it only hits us with one Dazzling Gleam in that time. Unfortunately though, because of the light screen, it meant Shadow Claw doesn't quite take out, so it does get another one off and knocks it into healing range, but at least this is a good way of wasting the full restores. He then sends out his Giraffe Ridge and I use Earth... Oh, I forgot to teach Earthquake and there's only Thunderbolt there, so I can't touch it. Fantastic. And Thunderbolt does no damage, allowing him to get up a Trick Room. Fantastic. 
I decided to chance the paralysis, but he actually does it to us, meaning that we synchronize it over to him. I decided to reflect his type just in case I got a lucky crit and got past him, but unfortunately I didn't and I'm too low to stay in, so I need to switch out. Uriel's the one that comes out and he gets hit quite low by the time we manage to take the giraffe ridge out with a surf. He then sends out his Medicham and this Medicham will take me out, so I decide I need to bring in another Pokemon. Obviously it's Lucifer as he's the only one that can take a hit at this point. It goes for a high jump kick, but the exact same as happens to the low pony happens to this where it misses, so it loses half its health. This means I'm free to set up a flash cannon which will take it out. After that, we have the Alakazam, but he decides just to go for a nasty plot so he can take it out with a dragon claw. Finally, we have the Bronzong, but it actually takes an Aura Sphere insanely well. Since the rest of my moves are actually not very effective against it, I just have to hold out and use Aura Sphere, and we do eventually get it low, but by the time we've done that, it has taken us out. Even on a run with legendaries only, I can't manage to keep everyone alive. How terrible am I? All I needed to do was remember to put Earthquake on mute and this would have been a sweep. Lucky for me though, Uriel can take one hit from it and then we finish it off with a Surf. And with that done, it leaves only one trainer left and that is Cynthia. I lead Uriel as she leads Spiritomb. This Pokemon can do some decent damage but it can't take me down in two shots and therefore I can get off two Tail Glows. Plus, I have a Citrus Berry, so I'm healed up somewhat decent by the time I've taken it out. She then brings out Roserade, but instantly withdraws it for whatever reason, so it gets hit heavy with an Ice Beam. Not enough to take it out, but I'm not really too worried as we had a Grass Knot for it anyway. After that, Roserade comes back out and gets the Ice Beam that it should have got the first time round. Lucario cannot stand up to a Surf, and Milo Tick trips over some Grass somehow. It's a bit of a snake sort of a thing, so I don't really get how, but yeah, it does. All that's left now is Garchomp, and I was hoping it'd Sword Stance, so this would be a sweep, but unfortunately it knows it can take us out, so it Earthquakes. This gives us a free switch into Mew, and he uses an Earthquake as I use an Ice Beam, but we dodge it, and then we get a Freeze. Even if we hadn't have done these things, it couldn't take us down in two Earthquakes, so we were pretty safe, but like, what is the look on this last thing? And once its Berry's gone, obviously we can take it down with one more Ice Beam. And as no surprise, we managed to beat the game with Legendaries only. I hope you guys enjoyed and goodbye.